I decided to choose Rudolf Drakers as my theorist due to the vocabulary and language that was used in describing his theory, which is ignoring negative behavior when a child is misbehaving, encouraging positive interactions with other children and um, adults, and positive behaviors, looking out for um, attention-seeking behaviors, and making sure not to engage in power struggles with children, along with not mistaking punishment for discipline. And it all really stood out to me because I realized having worked in a psychiatric hospital on the children's unit, that these were all things that we were taught and were incorporated in the program that we used to help children who main problem was behavioral issues. So, it was pretty neat to me to realize that the psychiatrist who organized the program um, were highly influenced by Drakers. Rudolf Drakers was born in Austria in 1897 to a merchant family. He joined the military when he was 18 years old and served in World War I. Once he got out of the military, he entered into medical school at the University of Vienna. He graduated there with a degree in psychiatry. He enjoyed learning from his colleagues and the elders of his new profession. Drakers worked closely with Adler up until his death in 1939 and continued the work they began after Adler died. He developed his theory based on Adler's belief that there is a social connection to mental disorders. He continued to spread Adler's principles and teachings across North America after his death. He founded what is now known as Adler University in 1952. He is best known for simplifying um, Adler's approach to and theory on individual psychology and the basis of Draker's theory of misbehavior comes from Adler's belief that all humans want a sense of social belonging and acceptance. Rudolf Drakers believed that all children wanted a sense of belonging, and that is the goal that is trying to be achieved when misbehaving. The four mistaken goals for achieving that sense of belonging and acceptance are seeking attention, wanting power and control, getting revenge, and feeling inadequate and helpless. It's most helpful to identify the goal before determining a logical consequence or form of action. A logical consequence is recommended as a way to deter the misbehavior as opposed to punishment. For example, if a child is acting out you would come up with a logical consequence for the behavior as opposed to punishing the child for a behavior. Meet Michael. Michael is five years old. He just learned how to tie his shoes and can write his own name. He loves building with Legos, especially tall towers, and doing color by numbers. Michael desires friendships, but lately has been getting into frequent arguments with his peers and can sometimes not keep his hands to himself. His home environment has recently become unstable after the split of his parents. Bye.
While walking in a line from the classroom to the library, Michael has difficulty following directions and staying with the group and in the line. He often trails behind and sometimes will poke at other kids in front of him. Michael's behavior would be identified as seeking power and control. Due to the instability of his home environment, Michael feels a loss of control and he attempts to gain that troll and seek power through his peers and at school. A logical consequence to this behavior would be to have Michael walk closely to the teacher when walking in a line to and from the classroom. The teacher should also have a private conversation with Michael at an appropriate time about his misbehavior and attempt to come up with limits that he could set for himself if this behavior continued in the future. If that did happen, the teacher should bring the issue up to his guardian in an attempt to correct the behavior and also to ensure the child that he is accepted. Some examples of a negative reaction that could have been used by the teacher would be to instead of using a logical consequence, punish the child. For example, no recess, a very common form of discipline that is still used in schools today. Eating lunch alone, staying after class or school for detention. While some may think that there, it, that, that would be a logical consequence, Drakers believe that this did not help to deter the misbehavior in the future. This would only further the child's feelings of being unaccepted and not really improve the situation or make it better. Another example of a negative reaction that could occur by the teacher would be to engage in a power struggle with the child. This happens all too often However, you cannot receive respect from a child who does not respect themselves. Power struggles are tiring and pointless. It's better to ignore the misbehavior or ignore the child who is attempting to engage in a power struggle with you or say, we can talk when you're calm and ready. Though they are not always a result of misbehavior and can also be applied to adults and children alike, are natural consequences, which is something Drakers also speaks of. A natural consequence is an inevitable result of a child's own actions. An example of a natural consequence would be if a child is leaning back on a chair and the child falls. Another example is if a child doesn't wear their coat outside after being told to put their coat on and as a result they get a cold. Another example would be if a child is running late to the bus stop and misses the bus. They are similar to what I would refer to as an I told you so or you get what you get moment. Draker's course of action for encouraging positive behavior goes as follows. View the misbehavior as a child's way of seeking belonging and acceptance. First, identify the mistaken goal and choose a logical consequence. Speak directly with the child and together set limits with the child for future behavior. Allow the child to give suggestions. This promotes responsibility. Positively encourage and influence the child. Also, you'll want to acknowledge and compliment positive behaviors in the future. Avoid rewarding these behaviors because this can be just as damaging for the child as punishing negative behaviors.
Drakers once said, there are no bad children, just discouraged ones. By using the theory as shown, teachers and parents can separate the child from the negative behavior and encourage the child. Punishment and rewards should not be used as forms of discipline. Positive encouragement, logical consequences, and limit setting are most beneficial in making a child feel accepted.